Hello, I'm Swami Avadut, and answering some of the questions of our friends. What is meditation? The true meditation is completely shut down of all your senses. Just like turning your an iPhone or a computer off and becoming true self, experience your true self, your spiritual soul. It's very difficult to shut off your senses because we have many of the senses, such as smell, seeing, touch, and we also have many apps open in our mind, the profession, who I am, what I'm doing, what I'm experiencing. So to shut down all these apps one by one, shut down all our senses one by one, this is true meditation. The true stage of meditation, it's very, very difficult to achieve. You have to shut down all your senses. Consider you like a mobile phone. You have to shut down every app and then your operation system. To experiencing your true self, shut down your seeing, smelling, feeling, hearing, etc. And just experiencing your true self as true spiritual soul. That is very rarely to achieve even by perfect yogis. What to speak about us, common people? So, in the time that we live called Kali Yuga, true meditation result is only achieved through chanting, conscious, deep chanting of holy names of Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. That is Maha Mantra. So why do we need mantra for the meditation? If you really deeply study mystic yoga, it will teach you how to breathe properly, how to fully control your mind. But all these stages of mystical yoga, which help you to concentrate your mind, finally will concentrate you on divine sound. So divine sound, Om, it's been accepted by most of the Asian Eastern religions. Why? Because that is the cosmic vibration which represents an absolute. Now this absolute can be seen from three different parts. The Brahman, the pervasive consciousness, the Paramatma, the presence of absolute in every atomic part, and Bhagavan. The Bhagavan means the personality, the personality of God. So when we talk about personality of God, the most essential principle of reality is beauty. There are six aspects of absolute, the beauty, knowledge, power, detachment, etc. So when we are talking about God from Western point of view, God is an old man from beard. That's how they, he's been represented by the artists that have been commissioned by the church. But one of the names of God tells us a lot, Nava Yovana, always new, always fresh, always young, eternal. That means he's not subject to life and death. So he exists in his intrinsic transcendental form, which is full of beauty, love, charm, and sweetness. Therefore, name in Sanskrit called Krishna, all attractive. The supreme being must be all attractive, but he also must be omnipotent, which means he represents all divine forms, all the avatars, all the divine expressions come from him as well as ourselves. So we are a little part and particle of God, but we're not fully realizing that, number one. Number two, we're not really on the level of God. It's just like a son of the king has the potential of power and opulence, but he is part of that world. So our unity with God, that we are coming from the same source, but the difference with God, with Krishna, we part and particle of Krishna, small infinite part, and he's infinite. He is, we'll never be able to compare a drop of ocean and ocean. However, we have the same, uh, partially we have the same nature. So our divine nature is Sat, which means eternity, cheat means consciousness, and if we fully realize that in our consciousness, that's our consciousness used to our full potential. And of course, anandam, the, the happiness. We exist in search of happiness. We exist because we want to be happy. Nobody wants to have eternal depressive life. Nobody wants to have eternal suffering. So search for the happiness, this is the purpose of existence. So fulfillment of our connections with Supreme Absolute can provide us the happiness that we're looking for. Why is that so? Because we are looking for a relationship. In this world, everything based on relationship. Try to become a friend of a king, 
and you'll get position in the kingdom. Try to be loyal to someone and you'll be very closely accepted. So relationship based on love, not on a material purpose or cause, or based on uplands or power, based on beauty. The loving relationship is the most powerful relationship ever. So we have that potential with Krishna to love Krishna and be loved by Krishna. Krishna already loves every living entity. That's not, a, it's not, that's not a question. The question is like, can we open our potential of love? Can we open our heart to Krishna? Very often in this world you can see, oh, somebody's broken my heart. I opened my heart to someone and he's broken my heart. But when you deal with Krishna, that's a different story. When you're opening your heart to Supreme Lord, Supreme Lord will open his heart for you. If you make one limited step towards Krishna, he make you towards you infinite steps. So the finite and infinite have bound through love. Love is the only principle which can connect little tiny soul and infinite God, Krishna.